There are many characters in the world of One Piece that are underrated, but Killer, he has to be like in the top five because he's one of the few characters that we see a lot of feats from to see that he is capable of doing things that our main characters can do, but people still for some reason will downplay him. Like some people thought that on the rooftop, he didn't do that much when in reality, he did quite a bit. When he and Zoro both ran to try to cut off Kaido's head and they both did that combo attack, even though they both failed to cut through Kaido or break his skin, he still said, well done, like that was a really good hit from you two. And people will give Zoro a lot of credit for this, but I'm not hearing anybody talk about Killer. And even though Killer doesn't have a way of cutting through Kaido's skin the same way Zoro does if he uses a lot of hockey, Killer just has his own way of tackling this situation by using internal damage with sound waves, making him one of only three people on the rooftop that were able to do internal damage to Kaido. In a move with this much AoE that can do that much damage to Kaido would be smoking a lot of other people in the series. Other than being a supernova, there's a reason why Killer was on the rooftop and not people like Sanji. And I know a lot of people say that Sanji is stronger than Killer, and you know what, that may be true. But what people need to stop doing is pretending like Killer is not relative to Zoro, because he 100% is. During the entire fiasco where Zoro had to fight Kamazo, who ended up being Killer, we know that under the name Kamazo, Killer was killing a lot of people around Wano and nobody was able to catch this dude. And then while fighting Zoro, he's able to deal this much damage to him, which is nothing to sneeze at. And I know Zoro was distracted in this moment because he was also dealing with Onimaru. But there are still two really good things to take away from this entire encounter. First one being, Killer can fight and hold his own against people that are of Zoro's caliber for an extended period of time and also threaten lethal damage in the process. And while yes, you can say that Zoro was at a handicap because he was missing one sword, Killer was at a bigger handicap because he was not only missing his main weapons, he was using two scythes instead of his punishers, which is like a completely different change in weaponry. At least Zoro knows he can use two sword style and he can use it very well. Meanwhile, for Killer, Punishers are like metallic bladed Tanfa versus a scythe, which is a completely different weapon. And if I'm being perfectly honest, it's not a weapon at all. It's a gardening tool. Yet despite that, Zoro still had to lock in to prevent this from happening to him. And while Killer did ultimately go down here to Zoro, Zoro also was starting to bleed out because of the damage that Killer was able to do to him. And that was damage that was being done without his main weapon. I can't stress that enough. Killer even says, if I had been using my punishers back then, you would have been dead, Zoro. And Zoro's like, it would have ended the same regardless. And I feel like there's a little bit of truth to both of these. The truth with Zoro is that if Zoro had three swords and Killer had his punishers, I still got my money on Zoro all day. But with Killer doing this much damage to Zoro and almost making him bleed out with weapons that he don't even really know how to use like that, if he had his punishers, he probably could have put Zoro on the t-shirt if he hit him with a clean move. Now, would he have got that clean move off? I do not think so, but it's just to show you the threat that he poses because that's how strong Killer is. I would definitely say being able to fight people like Zoro using weapons that aren't your own kind of puts him at a tier higher than people of Jag, Ashura, Doji. Mind you, even to finish off people like Jack, Inowarashi needed to go so long for him to finish that fight. If he did not have that, Jack was beating him. Same when it comes to Nekomamushi versus Perospero. But I think if you gave Killer his real weapons and you made him fight either of those two people, he would definitely kill them. And even though like his captain, he doesn't really use hockey, so he just has monstrous physical strength for no reason. Like this dude was surviving getting hit by full Goros just like Kid, just to get up afterward completely fine. He is also an extremely intelligent character too to fight somebody like Hawkins and figure out how to beat him. Mind you, this is not a fight he was supposed to be winning because Hawkins even said that you got a 92% chance of dying here and of course he did not. And once Killer used his brain to figure out how to get around Hawkins' devil fruit, the fight was over very shortly afterward because you do not want to get cut by these punishers, that's terrifying. Like take an extraordinarily sharp katana and then like put it to a propeller so it's just spinning like a helicopter and put it towards somebody's arm. That arm is coming off. There's a reason why he told Zoro, if I had these things, I would have killed you. Even if you manage to block these attacks, the sound that they produce will end up cutting you up inside so you will not be able to avoid it. All in all, I think Killer is an extraordinarily powerful pirate that does not get enough credit from people. If he had not been on the rooftop but Sanji was instead, we'd have all died. And that may be due to the fact that Sanji will be fighting kind of half-assed because he's not going to hit Big Mom, but it still leaves the point. That killer was putting in pain on Kaido until Big Mom came in and stopped him. Like, he was the cause that made Big Mom come in and intervene. So to the people saying that killer's like around third Yonko commander, stop doing that. He is definitely not that weak. Not that Jack is weak because he isn't. I'm just saying that killer is definitely way stronger than he is. The same way Ashura Doji did this, killer would just do way worse to both of them. But I definitely would have him bare minimum, like around second Yonko commander slot, like minimum. 
but due to his lack of using hockey, I could never really comfortably put him in the first Junko Commander slot. If he ever learns it, then yeah, I think he can take that spot comfortably because we see how strong he is and what he can do with limited strength. But for right now, I can definitely see him being around the second Yoko commander position. Only he would probably have the greatest attack potency out of that class outside of Queen's coffee beams. Because when he spins those blades and he brings them to one of your body parts, you're probably losing that body part. Which should go without saying because if it's a move that Kaido said well done after he got hit by it, that means you never want to get hit by it. Killer is an absolute menace and I can see how he got his name. Because if you are in front of these punishers, you are not going to be alive for very much longer. 